What's going on guys, Rob from clicksgeek.com and today we are going to go through three Google Ads mistakes you are most likely making and how to correct them today. Okay guys, welcome back. So right into this, I'm diving right in. Mistake number one is you are going to be sending traffic to your homepage of your website or your client's homepage of their website. And that is a massive, massive error if you're running Google Ads. There's only certain exceptions where I would even consider running traffic to a main website. And that's usually in the home remodel niche because people want to browse around different project galleries and it, it just more content driven niches like that. But for the most part, 99% of the time, I am not sending traffic to a homepage. And if you are, you're probably most likely losing money. And this is something that a lot of people don't understand. So right now you're looking at inside of our Instapage landing page software account. And this is a call only page for a limousine company. And they do party buses and all that stuff. So you'll see here it's, it's a template. So everything we do is a template in our company. It's just clone, swap, and move it around to, for new clients. We roll it down like an assembly line. And I highly suggest if you're an agency that that's what you guys are working to set up as well because it's just gonna be much more efficient to do it that way. So look at this landing page, very simple. We're not really giving them many options. They land on the page from the traffic. We're sending high quality purified Google Ads traffic, people looking to rent a limo, rent a party bus, rent an SUV, whatever, it doesn't matter. We have our main uh, call to action here, get a free quote, we have the logo, and then we have like a little menu style thing just kind of lists out the different um, vehicles that the client's running main call to action city name huge so we're, we're calling out immediately the traffic's coming to the page city name hey i know you're in the city i know that this pertains to you is what we're trying to go for here stretch limousines party buses sedans suvs and more right so let's just say rally stretch rally stretch, stretch limousines party buses sedans suvs and more philadelphia stretch, you know what i mean you get the idea so we're calling out the city the location of where the prospect of traffic actually is located, speaking to them directly in the first one second they land on the page. All right, so we're telling them, hey, you're here for a limo, obviously. Here's some of the limos we give them. Here's our call to action, get a free quote. Here, look, we serve your area. Here's more of reinforcing again of our different vehicles we're offering. And then we come down here for a little subheadline, and it's just about the different reasons why people book cars, limos, whatever, nights out, birthdays, bachelor parties, special events, brewery tours, weddings, all that stuff. Click for rates, call for rates, right? So it's a button just to call. And, and keep in mind, when someone comes to this page, I should probably be showing you guys this in mobile because this is all that really matters. Um, this is what they're seeing on their mobile phone because we only run mobile traffic, obviously, to a call-only page. That wouldn't really make sense to do it to desktop because you're going to have a high bounce rate and it's uh, just not going to convert well. So when someone comes from their phone, they land on this. This is what they're looking at. Very basic, guys, if this page converts anywhere from 20 to 30%, like clockwork. Again, we come down here, we're reinforcing again. We do limousines, sedans, stretch limos. Then we have some pictures of our vehicles, choose from the best. Little blurb about the company here, experience the difference, ride in style, more pictures of inside interiors of your stretch limousines or whatever. Another click to call number, then another one saying dial, if they're on a uh, Maybe they don't want to click the call. Book your reservation, call to action. And then again, we're saying, you know, book your party bus, little SUV for a fun night out, more images, social proof. Usually we'll put something here, whether it's a testimonial or a uh, graphic of a Google review that the client has, depends on the client. We want to see our fleet. So now we're showing all of our vehicles. People want to see what they're calling about renting, so use your best pictures for this area. I mean, I would honestly use your best pictures for the whole landing page, but it's just me. And then our final down here, call to action. When it comes to booking transportation, people plan ahead and our schedule fills up fast. A little urgency in the call to action there. Another click the call button here. And then down here, just our footer. So that's the layout of a mobile call only Landing page, very, very basic. Anyone can make this page. There's not much to it. It's a lot of just A-B testing and tweaking of the content and, and your call to actions of what's gonna drive the overall conversion rate. 
So keep that in mind when you're building your landing pages. But that is mistake number one. Everybody makes this mistake. Everybody. doesn't matter what level you're at. I know guys who have an agency with 200 clients that still make these, these mistakes often. So keep that in mind. You want to be funneling your traffic, your client's traffic, to something where you can control the outcome. Okay, okay. Mistake number two. You don't have conversion tracking set up. I know it's very rudimentary, but believe it or not, there's a lot of people who visit our channel and don't and are running campaigns and don't even have basic tracking set up, which obviously, if you're a little nuanced in Google Ads, is problematic. If you don't know what's generating you leads and revenue, then there's no way to determine if the money you're spending in Google Ads is profitable or if you're losing money. And obviously, if you're a business, that's a problem. So very basically, um, if you don't know how to set up conversion tracking in Google Ads, pause this video, open a new browser tab, go to youtube.com, search our channel, click Skeek, and, and when you're on our channel, search in the search bar for conversion tracking. I have literally 50 videos walking you through step-by-step step how to set up conversion tracking. Just sort by newest and watch the newest one, and you'll have the most up-to-date. But for this uh, example here, I'm going to walk you through our conversion actions for this guy. So you should be tra you should be tracking th at least for lead generation. You should be tracking three main conversions: call extension conversion, contact form lead conversion, and somebody who lands on a landing page from an ad and then just calls one of the tracking numbers on the page. So if we go up to tools and settings, conversions, you'll see here for this client we have our first one, which is call extension lead. Right, send 30 phone calls. So we have our conversion action set up here. Next, contact form lead, 106 conversions from the contact form. Like again, these are extremely important that you're tracking this stuff. So we know that 106 people filled out this full contact lead form. This is name, email, phone number, uh, year of your vehicle, because this is an auto glass, and I think make and model, something like that. And then a drop down box for the service they need. And then phone call, which is the conversion action for someone who lands on the landing page from one of our ads, 91 calls. So these are the most important metrics, guys. You have to track this stuff. I cannot stress it enough, especially if you're new to Google Ads and don't understand how the tracking works. That's okay. We've all been there. Everyone's been there. Just go to our channel, ClickSkeek, and search conversion tracking, and you can learn in 10 minutes. And you'll be a pro at setting up these conversion actions. And finally, mistake number three, auto-applying Google's recommendations or just applying them in general. Please stop. Stop doing it. 99% of the time, they are trash. They will throw your campaign off the rails and crush your lead generation. And I'm telling you this with the most sincerity I possibly can because I see it all the time. They, the, the auto-apply recommendations or people, usually as business owners, who are trying to run their accounts themselves will get emails from Google saying, hey, you can get more leads if you just turn all your keywords to broad match. Click here to do that. And it's all in an email. And they just click a button in the email and then they wonder why they either stop getting leads or they spent $500 in one day because Google suggested they increase their budget and didn't read the fine print of the auto recommendation. So this is very, very important, guys. It's a huge pain point that we see all the time with um, smaller local businesses. They don't understand how it works. So to turn this off so you're not caught in this trap is very simple. You're going to come to the account level, all right? So we're not in our campaign. We're actually in the account level right now. We're going to go up to recommendations. Click here to auto apply. It'll, sh it'll show you your auto apply stuff here, right? So top 10 recommendations. So any of these boxes are checked. That means you're allowing Google to auto apply them without your... You know, they're, they'll email you that they did it, but you, they're going to automatically do it. So we have one, remove conflicting negative keywords. Obviously, we don't, you know, Google wouldn't do that if there's ever an issue, so that's fine. But for the most part, you want to have make sure all of these are not checked, right? Like keywords and targeting, add new keywords. You do not want Google adding new keywords, trust me. The keywords they add are going to be trash. You don't want dynamic search ads being added. You don't want to upgrade your existing keywords to broad match. That is in suicide in Google Ads. You do not want to use display network. That, again, is like jumping off a roof. You don't want to do that. Bidding, you definitely don't want that messing with your bidding strategies. So this is all stuff you have to make sure is not checked.
The only one, as I said, we've checked is remove conflicting negative keywords because that can only help. It can't harm. And then when you do that, you come up here and you click save. Very important, guys. Make sure that you do not have a bunch of these checked and on and just, you know, letting Google do its thing because it'll because you'll keep making these changes automatically and you won't know what the hell's going on because you'll turn them off and then Google will come back and turn them on. This is how you stop it at the root. It's come into auto apply under recommendations and make sure everything's unchecked and then hit save. Very, very important. So in the comment section below this video, let me know if you guys have seen any nightmares with um, Google auto apply. I'm genuinely curious. I love seeing people's stories of when, uh, when they've had auto apply just keep messing with their stuff.